Bridges at the bike camp and I'm going to be meeting up with some people that are traveling from Fort Collins up to Washington but you won't believe who's traveling with them and how they're traveling. So let's go see if we can find them. This is the Beaverhead River, actually the Ruby River and the Beaverhead joined together right here in Twin Bridges. And then it joins up with the big hole just down there and it forms a Jefferson. It's a beautiful place to camp. They have showers and a place for people to cook. Twin Bridges, Montana, that's where we are. A little bit windy, I hope that's not gonna affect the sound. We'll try to find a place where it's not uh, too noisy. Am I interrupting your dinner? Well, we are just about to start. Oh, and wow. And a little bit sad because you wanted to sit next to me. Oh, gosh. Well, do you want to go ahead and have your dinner and then I'll come back? Uh, that would be great. Yeah. If you I'd... don't mind, if you have time. That looks like a pretty good dinner while I'm at it. Let me focus in on that. Gosh. Okay, well, I'll let you all eat and I'll see you in a few... Uh, Well, you picked a good time to be traveling, I think. Well, today is beautiful. Yeah. Have you run into some hazards? Um, the hardest part was in Yellowstone. Oh. Coming into Yellowstone, yeah. it was um, like two days of rain, oh. cold. We woke up one morning and it was two degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is. Very cold. Like two degrees. degrees. Oh yeah, that's cold. Yeah, it was cold. Do you have a, a down sleeping bag and everything? Are you warm? Did, were you able to stay warm yeah, enough? Yeah, we were, we were warm enough sleeping. We had to wear our sleeping clothes and our underclothes, but um, we, you know, get up in the morning and go out for breakfast. And just, I don't like it. No. <laughs> and then another campground over there. We we went and we set up our tent. And we started pouring, and we all had a giant puddle under our tent. And so we had to move our tents. Oh my gosh. Well, it's a good thing you weren't here yesterday. We had a huge hailstorm. Golf ball size hail. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, it was, it, it just came in so fast oh. and left really fast. Yes. So I was wondering what some of your yeah, the, what, hazards have been. Wyoming, we yeah. were going to Saratoga, Wyoming. I think it was Saratoga. And we could see the town about three kilometers away, but we could see like dark storm. I'm like, it's raining over there. And we didn't quite make it. Oh. It started hailing and blowing. Oh, and gosh. thankfully, a nice person in an RV, they stopped up ahead, blocked us from the wind. They oh. took one of the bikes and my wife and the kids in the RV to the town. Oh, that's nice. Um, that's nice. And then the storm passed. It was, a sh it was short. So yeah, yeah. It was a little better than. Yellowstone, yeah. It was, hmm. you could see it coming. Oh, like, okay. All right, so first of all, uh, let me introduce Robert and Anna. And I just met them a few hours ago at the Sheridan Park, and now we're down here in Twin Bridges at the bike park because, as you'll discover, they are having quite an adventure and they're going to tell us about it. All right, so Robert, you were starting to tell us 
about your adventure. Yes, well, we have been living in China for 12 years. My wife teaches at the international school, and I've been a full-time dad. And we are our youngest, who is turning five soon. He was, he was, they were all, the two youngest were born there. And so he was born there, so we didn't come back that year. And then COVID hit, and we didn't come back for another three years, so. It was about six years in China before we made it back to the States. Wow. And so our kids, they don't know America. Last summer was the first time when they came back that they remembered. And so just because of COVID and just the workload, we decided we just need a year off. We want to just have a change, a change of pace. Oh, so you're taking a whole year off? Yes. 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 To do... The United States? Yeah, well, mainly um, just to spend more time together as a family. Because um, like he, like Robert mentioned, our, our co the COVID years combined with the workload at school became very demanding. And so we decided it, I could have changed jobs, you know, but then that comes with its own stresses, you know, new city, new employment. So that wouldn't really give us more family time. So we decided to combine the two aspects, more family time, and introduce America to our children. And that's what gave us the idea about, let's do this with the, with the, the bicycles. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Did you uh, have to uh, work at getting in shape, or are you just um, bicycle people? Well, in China, we live at sea level. So we started in Fort Collins, Colorado, which is at 5,000 feet. So the elevation, like, we couldn't get in shape with elevation. But um, in China, we didn't have a car, so we'd just cycle everywhere. Oh. Um, we had what was called our family bike. It was like a cargo bike, and I could put the three kids on the back when they were smaller, and I would be the only one pedaling. But, and then we got two tandems in China, and we, just, we would cycle everywhere, do our shopping, just everything by bicycle. Oh. And so we were very used to riding bikes. Wow. And I'm not sure... I'm not sure exactly where the idea came to cycle around America came from. It just, I asked my wife one day, I'm like, so what do you think about if we take a year and just cycle around America? And your response was, sure. Wow. <laughs> I, I was shocked. I was like, really? I'm like, you don't have to think about this? Uh, well, it's because, like I said, we are just coming out of the, the, the COVID time. Oh, gosh, and yeah. Just the restrictions with that came with all that. And I was like, if I could take a year off, I would love that. So that was a year and a half ago, though, oh. is when we had the first discussion about it. And so um, I just re-signed a contract with that school, so I knew that we had our, about a year and a half to plan. Wow. So um, and talk about it with our children because we were going to be leaving, leaving their home. Yeah. Because um, we've been in Qingdao for eight years, Qingdao, oh. China. Oh. And we knew that that um, would be huge for them to leave their home. Uh huh. So. Do you live in by an American embassy, or or do you just live with you know uh, like, like? Well, my wife she taught at the international school, so there was a lot of foreign foreign teachers and foreign people we knew. We had a great church we went to there. Um, all foreigners um, for legal reasons, I guess you could uh -huh. say. And um, so we had a we had a really good community of people and a support group. Um, the yeah. the actual um, community that we lived in, though, I guess you say the building complex was we were the only foreigners though oh. in in the community. Our school was actually surprised. Oh, you want to live here? Do you know there's no other foreigners in your whole complex? Like, no, no, it's okay. So, do you speak Chinese? We speak enough. Oh. We speak enough. Yeah, we're not fluent. The kids, I wouldn't say the kids are fluent, but they're proficient. Wow. Yeah, they're proficient. Gosh. I speak enough to get around. Most people are like, oh, your Chinese is so good, but we know it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really something. So, um, you've been on the road for five weeks now? Five weeks, yeah. Five weeks. And yeah. you're traveling with three children? Yes. And yeah. their ages are? Rebecca is 12. And Lydia is nine and a half, and Josiah will be turning five in about, about five, one, five days. Five days. Oh. Five days. Well, hey, well, can you show show us how you travel? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Okay, so this is the bicycle. This is the bicycle that I ride, 
Um, so here I am, and I usually end up riding with Josiah, our youngest. He does not pedal, really. He just kind of moves his feet. Yeah? But, can he reach uh, the pedals? He can reach his pedal, my, pedals. My husband had the bike. What are those called, dear? Crank shorteners. Crank shorteners. Oh. So, and and the clips inside. So his feet move with my feet. Uh-huh. And so he fits great. It's the perfect height for him. He holds on very well. And he is a fantastic cyclist. Like he will sing to himself, talk, we'll have conversations. Oh. Even if he doesn't help me pedal, he doesn't complain. Nice. And that's actually a very big trait <laughs> oh. for a kid his age. Five years old. Yes. So, um, so yeah, there, I mean, there are the times that he did cry when it was raining or hailing. We all wanted to cry then. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I wasn't even out. <laughs> so, but he does very, very well. And then, and so with that, because Robert knows that Josiah does not help me pedal, um, I have less weight in my trainers mm. and on my bicycle. Wow. Because um, Robert has the older girls on his bicycle, which is over here. Wow, carrying uh, stuff for five people, mm -hmm. that's quite a lot. <laughs> How often do you have to restock for your supplies? Well, it really depends on um, the cities. Um, going through West Yellowstone, it was pretty much, well, Wyoming, I'll say that yeah, was the biggest Central thing. Wyoming is very barren. Oh, that was hard. And so some days, it would be like two days before we got to another store. And sometimes it's just a convenience store. So we're not eating very healthy or paying a lot of money for one loaf of bread because it's the only store there. But um, but we usually try to plan a, a day and a half. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so we just restock. Just look ahead, when is the next town that has a store? And then, we'll and then we'll put breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then we'll get breakfast, and then we'll buy lunch in this city. Uh, oh, so, so your route is all planned out, or do you kind of ad lib as you it's go? It's mostly planned out. There's a there's a organization called Adventure Cycling. Oh. Um, yeah, Adventure Cycling. And they have different routes planned out across the U.S. that they try and choose roads that are the safest, the least traffic, or the best shoulders. Or different oh, so, so generally you're... sticking to their routes, there'll be more things like this, like uh -huh. a bike camp, or a more bike-centered oh. because people are used to having lots of cyclists. Faster. Yeah, and how many miles a day do you travel? General, I mean, gee, this is hilly, hard country to travel. Generally, we don't go more than 30 miles a day. 30? Most yeah. most cyclists who do this, they, they just They can do like 60, they like 60, 60 miles 70. a day. Really? Yeah, we're doing about half what the average of, because it took us about two weeks to figure out what our kids could manage. So, because um, the first three days, it was all uphill in Fort Collins, Colorado, and we quickly realized we can't push it hard every day. We have to take 30 minute water breaks, have morning snacks and lunch. Walk, you know, we have to stop every 40 minutes for well, you, a rest. You couldn't have picked a hotter summer. My gosh, <laughs> our, our temperatures have been well mm. above average mm. in Montana and I mm. think all through the country mm. pretty much. Well, so are you- We're quite happy with that. Actually. You are happy yeah. with that. Because after like those few cold days in Yellowstone, I'm like, oh, oh yes. <laughs> yeah. I'd much rather have we like, will take the, the, heat. the heat, wake up in the morning and not be freezing than like- uh, Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. So yes. I like the heat. Yeah, most of the time though, the, the process of getting up in the morning is challenging because we're putting on layers because it's cool. Okay. And then we're shedding layers as we're going. Yeah. So we're having a, so every time we stop, we're like taking off another layer, putting it in a trailer, sure. trailer until we're just down to our sun clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Sun. yeah. But it's good. And we always wear long clothes just for, we don't want to put on sunscreen like everywhere all the time. Yeah. Just too much work, too much time, too much money. Just, right. And then you got so, that gooey feeling. Yeah. yeah. So we'd much rather just cover up and. Wow. So what direction are you taking from Twin Bridges? I'm curious. I know this area quite yeah. well on the roads. We are and heading it's... south to Dillon tomorrow. Oh, you? Okay. We want to get an early start because in the afternoon there's supposed to be a strong headwind. headwind. Ooh. Coming right. So we're okay. hoping to beat that. And then we'll head over to Wisdom and Missoula and then... So you're taking the back road. You'll go to Wisdom and then like Anaconda or I maybe you don't know that by I heart. don't know, but I know we'll go through Missoula eventually. Uh-huh. And I have family in northern Washington State. And North? so we'll go through Sandpoint, Idaho and mm. like that way. To see wow, what a thrill. A thrill of a lifetime, huh? Yeah. Not many people have an opportunity to do what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, we're very, we're feeling very blessed that we can actually 
do take a year off of life. So, so our, yeah. our big picture goal is to end up in Tucson, Arizona. We want to go down the West Coast. Mm -hmm. But we know, like, we got to take it one day at a time. Like, yeah. if it's not working for the family, yeah. we got to, like, shift gears and say, what is best for our family? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but so far, it's, it's been good. Like, mm -hmm. we have emotional days, we have good days, <laughs> but I think it's been a good experience so yes. far. And, yeah. like, so we're going to keep going. That's that's just incredible. I, I can't even imagine. I mean, I can't imagine these uh, individuals traveling because I know the hills and the routes you're taking. It's a, it's a tough haul, but I mean, you're traveling through some of the most beautiful country yes. you can imagine, starting in Fort Collins. And so when you went through Wyoming, mm -hmm. you went from Fort Collins on up like Greeley, Cheyenne, and oh. Uh, we went over over the mountains over Cameron Pass which is like 10,200 feet. Wow. That was intense. <laughs> and you're just yes. getting started. Yeah, that that, that was started. And we we actually told our children like you can't quit with that first week. I was like is this going to be so tough for all of us? I was like you cannot quit. Yeah. I was like because it's like you can't just stop pedaling saying I'm done. And I was like it's going to be tough we, but right when we get over that pass you know, then it's going to be kind of more up and downs, hills, flat, a combination of mm -hmm. terrain. Mm -hmm. and, so. and after that, we went through Saratoga and Rollins, and then up through the Great Divide Basin, which is pretty much nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that happens, that's a long, that that's a long too. haul in a car. I can <laughs> yeah. imagine. Yeah. And then did you? Um, let's see. You went through Jackson Hole and on up that road into West Yellowstone um, on Highway 89? Yeah, we went to Du Bois and then we took a detour down to Teton National Park into oh, Cameron yeah. Lake. Beautiful, it's beautiful country. It's very, yeah, beautiful. very beautiful, yes. Did you go the, through the Wind River? Uh, yes. yes, yes we did. You did. Very, we, were, oh. we were actually very blessed. We met um, an older couple in Lander Mm -hmm. because we weren't sure where we were going to stay in Wind River. A lot of people mm -hmm. just cycle the whole way through because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of mm -hmm. places for people to stay. Mm -hmm. um, but he was explaining, he gave us the whole history of the Wind River and like he, he was very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. so he had the but he's like, there's something. a town in the middle, it's not actually part of the reservation. You can stay behind the fire station, there's a shop there. Like, mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we, we slept behind this fire station in the middle. Of the All because this, we met a wonderful, nice man at a park. Isn't that and, nice? and we were just, and he, Invite us to her to his home to wash our clothes. Yeah, like, laundry. Oh, you can stay at our house, and then they fed us, and then was just, like, yeah. And then the, that was such a blessing because we had no idea how we we're going to get past that big long stretch. Yeah. And but there was that one fire station right in the middle. Yeah. And we were able to camp right behind it, right across the store from the convenience. Like, yeah. Right across yeah. the convenience store. Wow. So, um, what is your date to get up to northern Washington? Like, how long do you expect? Probably the end of September. End of September. Mm -hmm. It's another um, month. Yeah. Wow. And then the plan, like I said, is to go down the coast, but the Oregon coast in the autumn is very rainy and wet. And after our couple of rainy days in Yellowstone, we're not sure if we're going to like bypass that somehow. Mm -hmm. We're going to skip right to California. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> rent a car and drive that part. Because basically our main goal is for our children yes to see to see America but we don't want them to come out of this experience going that was horrible we hated it so um, so we, that's a, like, break it up a little bit yeah so we, we reflect with them every night what was great about today what was challenging about today and so they so we want them to understand like we, we are listening to you like if you are exhausted and your body needs an extra day of rest then we feel you as a family then we will do that nice. so um, I don't know, there's sometimes that we can't just depend because we know the time and the weather that's about to come. Or there's no stores nearby and we well, there's no food. Yeah. <laughs> like, so we I, can't stay here, I'm sorry. Right, yeah. right, you gotta so, keep but, going. But we try to be very transparent with them about why we're doing what we're doing. Like tomorrow we gotta get up super early because there's gonna be a strong headwind. Mm. So, um, so we try to be very clear with them about why it's gonna be hard to get up when it's dark, you know, but that's the best thing that we got to do so we'll be happier when the afternoon hits <laughs> yeah um gosh that's amazing can we go see here yeah. oh now this is the one that caught my attention yeah, wow motion cycles is uh, out of eugene oregon i think it's in oregon and they actually make these triple bikes made specifically for children on the back so they're very small on the back wow. um and so it's it's great 
and then I also have a trailer with a rack because I carry a little more weight. Um, wow. But it's at first, it takes getting used to it because it's so long. But now that I'm used to it, it just feels normal. Oh, that is quite so. That's longer than a car, actually, isn't it? It's a little over ten feet. Wow. Gosh, that's incredible. Yeah. So each each kid they have their pouch on their handlebars where they put their they have notebooks or animals. We have a Kindle here. I made a special um, string so if they drop it, it's not going to crash in the road. Oh. Break. So if they want to read while we're riding, like they can do that. Interesting. Or if I want to make them read because I want them to learn something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Forgot. Yeah. Kids are still learning. Well, this is this is the best education you could ever give them. Try not to make it too, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the, the unspoken benefits of this trip. Like yeah. what you're saying, making you slow down. Yeah, because life is always just go, go, go. People have to get up at a certain time, get to work. Um, if you have children, and the, the rush of children combined in with that. And then when you get home, and then you're exhausted. And it's just like, repeat, go. Right. And it's just all the time. And that was one thing that we... Um, we really liked about this, the idea of cycling, even though, even though it's tough, is it makes us slow down. Especially when we're going up those hills, like I've had to learn in this past month, that it's okay not to go up a hill fast. It's like there's no, it's not a, a sprint to see how fast you can get to the top. We're in, it's a, it's a marathon. It's like if we gotta go, literally have to go up a hill at two miles per hour because it's a steep hill, that's fine. That's okay. Let's count how many roadkill we see, or <laughs> yeah. let's count how many and broken bungees we see on the side of the road. Right. You know, it just makes you. And there's things that we would never ever see if we were in a car because it would just zoom by. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, absolutely. Um, yeah. There's this quote, cycling quote. I don't remember where it came from, but it says something along the lines of, "When you're cycling, it's fast enough to actually get somewhere, but it's slow enough to actually experience the things that you're." you're passing um, mm -hmm. so I like that and it, it's really helped us to appreciate the, the small things in life like tonight we want to set up the tent oh, yeah, we didn't, like we're yeah. so excited we want to set up the tent <laughs> and take it down we were we, we, we saw the little the little shelter and that was the first thing our children said oh, we don't have to set up the tent well yeah we just got to blow up the beds and have our mats because that takes Because just setting up the tent takes so much time and taking down the tent and um, so that was a hidden blessing but all those those are the little things that um, that our children are starting to see now yeah. those blessings of life that you just don't think it's time consuming but you could now take that time and do it for something that you really really want to do like play with a basketball or just sit in a park mm -hmm. To play a game. I don't know how tired you are, but do you know what a zip line is? Yes. Yes, we do. Well, um, just in the middle of the park over there, there's a miniature zip line. Oh. You would love it. The kids would have fun. Yeah, yeah. It's just like a, a short walk oh. across the bridge and keep going, and then you'll see um, off to the right where the baseball field is. Okay. It's in that area. Yeah, I know you want to walk over there. Yeah, you're all excited about it. This, you just missed the Madison County Fair oh. and Rodeo. It was last week, and that's the rodeo ground and Madison County Fairgrounds. Okay. Oh. And you can see all the great buildings. This is really a, a, a nice complex mm -hmm. over there. Typical, classic, old-time Montana. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're going through the... Um, more like what Montana used to be, whereas some places in Montana have just boomed, like Bozeman, they call Bos Angeles, and now mm. Kalispell is exploding, and it just doesn't even feel like Montana. Yeah. But this part that you guys are going through is, is more like yeah. Montana. Yeah. So anyway, well, I, I just really want to thank you for taking the time and... Um, I wish you happy, happy travel.